Blood poured from the gash in Lieutenant Jordan Walker's forehead as he dragged his shattered body from the twisted wreckage of his F-52 Raptor, abandoned on an alien moon, while the Adotian Dreadnought blasted the last human ships into stardust. Jordan had been engaging Adotian starfighters in the Vega system, dodging and destroying, even as the odds stacked against him. His engines screamed as he banked hard, lining up behind an enemy fighter. His pulse cannon flashed, and the Adotian ship exploded into sparks and shrapnel. Then the Dreadnought arrived. It tore itself out of hyperspace, a behemoth of alien metal bristling with city-leveling cannons. The Dreadnought opened fire immediately, filling space with searing light. Jordan's wingman, Hernandez, caught a direct hit. His fighter vaporized instantly. Alarms blared in Jordan's cockpit as the Dreadnought's onslaught shredded his shields and sent his engines into critical failure. Smoke filled the cockpit and emergency lights flashed red. He was going down. The grey surface of Vega Prime's moon rushed up to meet him as his raptor spiralled out of control. The impact nearly knocked Jordan out cold. His head smashed against the controls, painting them red. His harness dug into his chest as his battered body whipped forward. Then it was over. Ears ringing, blood dripping into his eyes, Jordan hit the emergency release on his harness and kicked open the raptor's cracked canopy. He tumbled onto the rocky grey ground, the jagged stone digging into his hands and knees. Every movement sent pain lancing through his bruised body. Jordan rolled onto his back, gasping for breath as he stared up at the stars. In the cold depths of space above him, the Adotian dreadnought hung like a monstrous blade in the void, ruthlessly obliterating the last human ships. Hernandez was dead. They were all dead. And soon, the Adotians would come for any survivors. For him. Jordan pushed himself to his feet, biting back a scream as white-hot agony shot through his left leg. Something was definitely broken. He'd have to find shelter, hide himself away to tend his wounds. He couldn't let the Adotians capture him. He had a wife and son back on Earth. He had to survive this for them. Jordan limped forward, leaving a trail of crimson drops on the alien stone, his mind whirling between the pain, the fear, and the all-consuming will to live. This moon would not be his grave. The Adosian Empire had taken too much already. For years the war had raged, the alien aggressors seeking human worlds to strip of resources. How many had died to hold the line? How many more would fall? Jordan pressed forward, his broken leg screaming with every agonizing step. The grey stone stretched out before him, a seemingly endless expanse of jagged rock and deep crevices. Each ragged breath tore at his lungs, his body pushed to its limits by pain and exhaustion. Suddenly a faint cry echoed across the barren landscape. Jordan froze, his heart pounding. The sound had come from a nearby ravine, a deep gouge in the moon's surface. Carefully, Jordan limped to the edge and peered down into the shadows below. There, lying in a crumpled heap at the bottom of the ravine, was an Edotian pilot. His ship, a twisted wreck of metal, lay nearby, smoke still rising from its ruined engines. The pilot let out another weak moan, his body broken and bleeding. Jordan hesitated, his mind racing. This Edosian was his enemy, part of the merciless empire that had slaughtered countless humans across the stars. How many of Jordan's friends and comrades had died at Edosian hands? How much suffering had they inflicted on the people of Earth and her colonies? But as Jordan looked down at the helpless wounded pilot, he knew he couldn't abandon him. Enemy or not, this was a living being in need. Jordan's conscience wouldn't let him turn his back on someone who couldn't defend themselves. Gritting his teeth against the pain in his leg, Jordan carefully began to descend into the ravine. Loose rocks skittered beneath his feet, threatening to send him tumbling down. He caught himself on the rough stone, his hands scraped and bleeding. The Adosian pilot looked up as Jordan approached, his eyes wide with fear and confusion. With a trembling hand he reached for his sidearm, but his injuries made the movement slow and clumsy. Jordan raised his hands, showing he was unarmed. I'm not here to hurt you, he said, keeping his voice calm and steady. Let me help. The pilot stared at him, 
disbelief etched across his alien features. Jordan knelt down beside him, getting a closer look at his wounds. The Adosian's name was stitched onto his flight suit, Solaris. Why would a human help me? Solaris asked, his voice strained with pain. Because it's the right thing to do, Jordan replied, already reaching for his emergency medical kit. Taz Jordan worked to stabilize Solaris's injuries, using supplies from both of their kits. The Adosian watched him intently. Jordan could practically see the gears turning in Solaris's head as he tried to reconcile this act of compassion with everything he'd been taught about humans. But unknown to both Jordan and Solaris, their every move was being watched. High above the ravine, hidden from view, an Edotian recon drone hovered silently. Its cameras zoomed in on the unlikely pair, capturing every moment of their interaction. Light years away on the bridge of the Edotian dreadnought, the drone's footage played across a large viewscreen. The Edotian commander watched, his expression unreadable, as a human soldier tended to the wounds of an Edotian pilot, an act of mercy amidst a war that had shown none. On the bridge of the Adotian Dreadnought, Commander Zorgax's eyes narrowed as he watched the footage of the human soldier tending to Solaris's wounds. As a hardened veteran of the war against humanity, Zorgax had always viewed humans as nothing more than savage inferior beings to be crushed beneath the might of the Adotian Empire. The very idea of a human showing compassion to an Edosian was utterly incomprehensible to him. Bring them to me, Zorgax ordered, his voice cold and hard. I want them alive. Yes, Commander, his subordinates replied, already relaying the orders to the elite capture team on the moon's surface. Zorgax leaned back in his command chair, his mind racing with possibilities. Interrogating the human and Solaris could yield valuable intelligence about human tactics and weaknesses, and the footage of their interaction could be used as propaganda, proof of human treachery and deceit. Yes, this was an opportunity he could not afford to waste. Down on the moon, Jordan helped Solaris to his feet, supporting the wounded Edotian as they made their way across the rocky terrain, seeking better shelter from the cold and any potential Edotian patrols. They walked in silence for a time, the only sounds the crunch of their boots on the stone and Solaris's laboured breathing. "'Why are you doing this?' Solaris asked suddenly, his voice strained with pain and confusion. Why help me? Jordan was quiet for a moment, considering his answer. Because it's what I'd want someone to do for me, he said at last, if I was in your position. Maybe it's time for that to change, Jordan replied. Maybe it's time we start seeing each other as something more than just enemies. As they walked, they began to talk slowly at first, then with growing openness. Jordan learned that Solaris was a father, just like him with a mate and children waiting for him back on his homeworld. He spoke of his dreams for a better future, one where his children could grow up without the constant specter of war. In turn, Solaris listened, as Jordan shared his own hopes and fears, his love for his family, and his determination to make it back to them. Solaris began to realize that humans were not the monsters he had been taught to hate, but beings with lives and aspirations not so different from his own. Just as a fragile understanding began to grow between them, a sudden burst of movement caught Jordan's eye. Figures in Edosian combat armor were emerging from the rocks all around them, weapons trained on the pair. Don't move, one of them barked, his voice harsh and commanding. Drop your weapons and surrender. Jordan and Solaris froze, raising their hands slowly. They were surrounded, outnumbered and outgunned. There was no escape. The leader of the Edotian squad stepped forward, his armor emblazoned with the insignia of a lieutenant. I am Lieutenant Kaz, he announced, his voice dripping with contempt. By order of Commander Zorgax, you are now prisoners of the Edotian Empire. Jordan and Solaris exchanged a look of grim understanding as they were roughly searched and their weapons confiscated. Then, prodded by the barrels of Edosian rifles, they were marched away toward a waiting shuttle that would take them up to the dreadnought and an uncertain fate. As he stumbled along, his wounds throbbing with every step, Jordan's mind raced. He had to find a way out of this, a way to escape and complete his mission. But for now, all he could do was endure and watch for an opportunity. 
Beside him, Solaris walked in stoic silence, his face set in a mask of determination. Whatever happened next, they would face it together, not as enemies but as fellow prisoners of a war that had already taken too much. The Adosian shuttle shuddered as it docked with the dreadnought, the airlock hissing open, to reveal a squad of heavily armed guards. Jordan and Solaris were dragged out, their wrists bound in energy cuffs that bit into their skin. The guards marched them through the ship's dark, oppressive corridors, past rows of glaring Edosian crew members. Jordan held his head high, refusing to show fear, even as his heart hammered in his chest. They were brought to a large, dimly lit chamber, where Commander Zorgax waited, his massive frame silhouetted against the red glow of the interrogation devices lining the walls. Kneel before the Commander! Lieutenant Kaz barked, shoving Jordan and Solaris to their knees. Zorgax stepped forward, his eyes cold and pitiless as he loomed over the prisoners. Why did you aid this Edosian human? he demanded, his voice a low growl. Why betray your own kind? Jordan met Zorgax's gaze, his jaw set. I didn't betray anyone, he said, his voice steady despite the pain of his injuries. I saw a fellow being in need, and I helped. That's what we should all do, regardless of species. Zorgax sneered, his lips curling back to reveal sharp, pointed teeth. Pathetic, he spat. Your compassion is a weakness, one that will be your undoing. He turned to Kaz. Begin the interrogation. I want to know everything this human knows about his people's plans. Kaz grinned, a sadistic gleam in his eyes as he moved towards a control panel bristling with levers and buttons. With pleasure, Commander. But before Kaz could lay a finger on the panel, a massive explosion rocked the ship, sending everyone stumbling. Alarms blared, red lights flashing as the deck shuddered beneath their feet. Commander, an Edosian officer shouted over the din, we're under attack. A human infiltration team has breached our defenses. Zorgax whirled, his face contorted with rage. All hands to battle stations, he roared. I want those humans found and eliminated. In the chaos, Jordan saw his chance. He surged to his feet, slamming his shoulder into Kaz and sending the lieutenant crashing into the control panel. Sparks flew and smoke poured from the damaged equipment as Jordan frantically searched for a way to remove his cuffs. Beside him, Solaris grappled with Zorgax, the two titans locked in a brutal struggle. They crashed through the observation window, shards of glass raining down as they tumbled onto the bridge below. Jordan leaped after them, snatching up a fallen plasma rifle as he landed. He raised the weapon, aiming it squarely at Zorgax's broad back as the Edosian commander pummeled Solaris with blow after blow. But in that moment, Jordan hesitated. Solaris's words echoed in his mind, the plea for understanding, for an end to the endless cycle of violence. Lowering the rifle, Jordan called out, his voice ringing across the bridge, Zorgax, stop this. Can't you see this war is destroying us all? We have to find another way. Zorgax paused, his fist raised for another strike. Slowly he turned, his eyes blazing with a fury that bordered on madness. Another way? he snarled. There is only one way, human, the way of the strong. With a roar, Zorgax shoved Solaris aside and charged at Jordan, his hands outstretched like claws. Jordan had no choice. He raised the rifle and fired, the plasma bolt catching Zorgax square in the chest. The Edosian commander stumbled, his eyes wide with shock. He crashed backwards into the central command console, his body smashing into the delicate controls. Warnings flashed across the screens, alarms shrieking as system after system went critical. The dreadnought shuddered, the deck bucking beneath Jordan's feet as he raced to Solaris's side. The wounded Edosian looked up at him, his expression a mix of pain and grim determination. "'We have to get off this ship,' Solaris gasped, his voice strained, "'before it tears itself apart.' Jordan nodded, slinging Solaris's arm over his shoulder. Together they stumbled towards the nearest escape pod, the ship disintegrating around them as the chain reaction of failures spread like wildfire. They tumbled into the pod. Jordan slamming the launch button as another explosion rocked the dreadnought. The pod blasted free, shooting out into the star-strewn void, 
as the mighty Edosian warship crumbled and burned behind them. Jordan and Solaris sprinted through the collapsing corridors of the Edosian dreadnought, the deck heaving beneath their feet as explosions tore through the dying ship. Sparks rained down from ruptured conduits, and the acrid stench of burning metal filled the air. Rounding a corner, they skidded to a halt, confronted by a scene of chaos. A group of Edosian crew members, including a battered Lieutenant Kaz, were trapped beneath a twisted mass of fallen girders, the wreckage groaning ominously as the ship shuddered around them. Without a second thought, Jordan leaped forward, ignoring the screaming pain of his own injuries. He raised his plasma rifle and fired, the searing bolts slicing through the debris like a scalpel. Solaris joined him, straining to lift the heavy metal beams, his face contorted with effort and pain. As the last of the Adotians crawled free from the wreckage, Kaz clasped Jordan's arm, his grip firm. Thank you, he said, his voice rough with emotion. I was wrong about you, about humans. Jordan nodded, a brief smile flashing across his battered features. We're all in this together now, let's get to those escape pods. They raced onward, navigating the labyrinthine corridors with Solaris's guidance, the Edosians' intimate knowledge of the ship's layout proving invaluable, but their progress was hampered by pockets of resistance, Edosian soldiers still fanatically loyal to Zorgax's vision of conquest and domination. Jordan and Kaz fought side by side, human and Edosian united against a common foe. Plasma bolts sizzled through the air as they pushed forward, their differences forgotten in the desperate struggle for survival. At last they reached the escape pod bay, the sleek capsules beckoning like beacons of hope amidst the destruction. But as they approached, a massive explosion ripped through the deck, a shockwave of fire and shrapnel tearing through the chamber. Jordan felt himself being flung backwards, his body slamming against a bulkhead with bone-crushing force. Through a haze of pain and smoke, he saw Solaris and Kaz staggering towards the nearest escape pod, the way ahead clear. But the control console had been damaged in the blast, the pod's launch sequence frozen. Solaris and Kaz pounded on the unyielding hatch, their faces etched with desperation. Jordan hauled himself to his feet, every movement an agony. He limped to the console, his vision blurring as he scanned the flickering displays. There was a way to launch the pod manually, but it would have to be done from outside, and with the ship coming apart around them, there would be no time for whoever stayed behind to reach another pod. Jordan's gaze met Solaris's, a moment of unspoken understanding passing between them. The Edosian opened his mouth to protest, but Jordan cut him off with a shake of his head. Go, he said, his voice rough with pain and determination. Get your people to safety. That's what matters now. Tears glistening in his eyes, Solaris clasped Jordan's hand one last time, before allowing Kaz to pull him into the escape pod. Jordan watched as the hatch sealed shut, his fingers already flying across the console, initiating the launch sequence. With a hiss of released pressure and a burst of thrusters, the pod jettisoned away from the crumbling dreadnought, carrying Solaris, Kaz and the other survivors to safety. Jordan watched it go, a smile of bittersweet triumph on his face. Then the ship bucked and heaved around him, the final cataclysmic detonation tearing through its heart. Jordan closed his eyes as a wall of fire rushed towards him, consuming the chamber in a blinding flash of heat and light. In the escape pod, Solaris and Kaz watched in horror as the Edosian dreadnought vanished in a massive fireball, the explosion blooming like a short-lived sun against the starry backdrop of space. Solaris pressed a hand against the viewport, his heart aching with the knowledge of Jordan's sacrifice. Solaris nodded, a fierce determination kindling in his eyes. Then we must not let that sacrifice be in vain, he declared. We will honor Jordan's memory by striving for peace, by building bridges instead of barriers between our peoples. His courage and compassion will be our guiding light in the darkness ahead. And as the escape pod carried them towards an uncertain future, Solaris silently vowed to carry on the legacy of the brave human soldier, who had shown him the true meaning of heroism and unity in the face of overwhelming odds. 
As the escape pod carrying Solaris and Kaz blasted away from the doomed Edosian dreadnought, another pod shot from the disintegrating ship. Inside, Lieutenant Jordan Walker gasped for breath, his body battered and bruised, but miraculously alive. With barely a second to spare, he had thrown himself into the damaged escape pod, initiating the launch sequence even as explosions ripped through the chamber around him. The force of the Dreadnought's final cataclysmic detonation hurled Jordan's pod tumbling through space, sending it careening wildly off course. Alarms blared and warning lights flashed red as the pod's systems struggled to compensate, but it was no use. Jordan could only watch helplessly as the pod hurtled away from the debris field that had once been the mighty Edosian warship, propelled by the shockwave towards the unknown depths of space. Days passed, the pod's limited stasis systems keeping Jordan alive as it drifted far from any charted route. Finally, with a shuddering impact that jolted him back to full consciousness, the escape pod slammed into the surface of an uncharted planet, skidding and bouncing across the alien landscape before coming to a rest in a dense, vibrantly coloured forest. Jordan kicked open the pod's hatch, wincing as the bright sunlight of an alien sun stabbed into his eyes. He hauled himself out of the wreckage, every movement sending fresh waves of pain through his battered body. But he was alive, and as he surveyed his surroundings, he knew that his struggle for survival had only just begun. The forest around him was like nothing he had ever seen, a riot of strange colours and twisted organic shapes that seemed to defy the very laws of nature. Massive trees with fluorescent bark towered overhead, their branches laden with luminous, pulsating fruits. Everywhere he looked, strange creatures flitted and scurried, their cries and calls echoing through the alien undergrowth. Over the next few days, Jordan relied on his training and ingenuity to carve out a tenuous existence on this strange alien world. He used the plasma cutter to fashion a basic shelter from the wreckage of his pod, the gleaming metal standing out in stark contrast to the organic wilderness that surrounded it. He foraged for food and water, carefully testing each new plant and creature he encountered to determine if it was safe for human consumption. But even as he struggled to survive, Jordan couldn't shake the feeling that he was being watched, that some unseen presence was observing his every move. He would catch glimpses of movement out of the corner of his eye, hear whispers and rustles in the undergrowth that seemed to vanish whenever he turned to look. And then on the fifth day he found it, deep in the heart of the alien forest, hidden beneath a tangle of bioluminescent vines, Jordan stumbled upon the ruins of an ancient city. Towering spires of some unknown metal rose up from the forest floor, their surfaces etched with strange flowing script that seemed to shimmer and dance before his eyes. Everywhere he looked, he saw evidence of a civilization far beyond anything he had ever encountered, a society that had once reached the pinnacle of technological achievement. With growing excitement, Jordan began to explore the ruins, his heart pounding as he marveled at the wonders that surrounded him. And there, in the heart of the city, he found it, a vast, ancient computer system still functioning after countless millennia. The interface was like nothing he had ever seen, a swirling holographic display that responded to his every thought and gesture. As Jordan delved deeper into the alien database, his eyes widened in shock and wonder. The history of this long-dead civilization unfolded before him, a tale of a once-great society that had reached the stars, only to be consumed by a devastating war. But it was not a war with the Edosians, as he had first assumed. No, the records spoke of another species, a race of beings whose name and form had been lost to the ages. The war had begun as a simple misunderstanding, a tragic series of events that had spiralled out of control. But it had quickly escalated, fueled by the same cycle of hatred and violence that now consumed the Edosians and humans. The ancient civilization had fought bravely, their advanced technology and wisdom no match for the brutal onslaught of their enemies. In the end, they had been utterly destroyed, their cities reduced to ruins and their knowledge scattered to the winds. As Jordan sat back, his mind reeling from the revelation, a fierce determination began to take hold. He knew that he had to find a way back to his people to share this discovery with them. The knowledge and technology contained within these ruins could change everything, 
could provide the key to ending the war between the Adotians and humans once and for all. But he also knew that it would not be easy. The ruins were vast, and the technology was far beyond anything he had ever encountered. It would take time to unravel its secrets, to learn how to harness its power, and even then, there was no guarantee that he would be able to find a way off this planet to make his way back to the front lines of the war. But as Jordan looked out over the ruins of the ancient city, he knew that he had to try, for the sake of his people, for the sake of the Edotians, for the sake of all the lives that had been lost in this senseless conflict, he would find a way. No matter the cost, no matter the sacrifice, he would not rest until he had brought this knowledge back to those who needed it most. With a fierce determination burning in his heart, Jordan turned back to the alien computer, his fingers flying over the holographic controls as he began his search for answers. The future of two species hung in the balance, and he would not let them down. The Edosian recovery team's shuttle streaked through the debris field that had once been the pride of the Edosian fleet, its scanners probing the wreckage for any signs of life. On board, Solaris and Kaz sat in silence, their minds still reeling from the events that had unfolded on the Dreadnought's bridge. As the shuttle docked with the recovery ship, Solaris and Kaz were ushered into a medical bay, their wounds tended to by a team of Edosian doctors. The days that followed passed in a blur of debriefings and medical exams, as the two survivors recounted their experiences to a panel of high-ranking Edosian officials. But it was Solaris's account of Jordan's actions that sent shockwaves through the Edosian hierarchy. The idea of a human sacrificing himself to save Edosian lives was unprecedented, challenging centuries of deeply ingrained prejudice and hostility. Jordan showed me that humans are not the monsters we've been led to believe, Solaris told the assembled officials, his voice raw with emotion. If we continue down this path of hatred and violence, we'll be no better than the enemies we claim to fight. Kaz, standing beside Solaris, nodded in agreement. Jordan's sacrifice opened my eyes, he said. We have to find a way to end this war before it consumes us all. In the days that followed, Solaris and Kaz began to work tirelessly within the Edosian military and government, advocating for a peaceful resolution to the conflict with the humans. They met with politicians, generals, and influential figures, sharing their experiences and arguing for a new approach to interspecies relations. At first, their efforts were met with skepticism and outright hostility. Many Edosians, steeped in a culture of militarism and xenophobia, saw any talk of peace as a sign of weakness. But slowly, as word of Jordan's actions spread, more and more Edosians began to question the wisdom of continuing the war. However, not everyone was receptive to Solaris and Kaz's message. Admiral Drazak, Zorgax's brother, and a powerful figure within the Edosian military, saw their actions as a betrayal of everything he held dear. To Drazak, the very idea of peace with the humans was anathema, a threat to Edosian supremacy and a stain on his brother's memory. Solaris and Kaz are traitors, Drazak declared to a gathering of his most loyal supporters. They spit on the sacrifices of our brave soldiers and sully the memory of those who have fallen in battle. Drazak's words found fertile ground among the hardliners within Edosian society, those who had lost loved ones to the war and those who stood to profit from its continuation. They rallied around the Admiral, forming a powerful faction dedicated to opposing Solaris and Kazi's peace movement. As tensions rose, Drazak unleashed a campaign of propaganda and misinformation, painting Solaris and Kaz as weak-willed cowards who had been manipulated by human trickery. His agents infiltrated the ranks of the peace movement, sowing discord and doubt. In the streets of Edosian cities, clashes erupted between Drazak's loyalists and those who supported Solaris and Kaz's cause. Peaceful protests turned violent as Drazak's thugs attacked demonstrators, leaving scores injured and arrested. Solaris and Kaz, undeterred by the growing opposition, redoubled their efforts. They organized secret meetings, reaching out to those within the military and government who shared their vision of a future without war. But with each passing day, the situation grew more volatile. Assassins hired by Drazak made attempts on Solaris and Kaz's lives, 
forcing them to go into hiding. In the shadows, a network of informants and spies kept them one step ahead of their enemies, but they knew their time was running out. As the spectre of civil war loomed over the Adosian homeworld, Solaris and Kaz found themselves in a desperate race against time. They had to find a way to expose Drazak's machinations and rally the Adosian people behind the cause of peace before their civilization tore itself apart. In the ancient alien ruins, Jordan worked feverishly to repair the spacecraft, his hands flying over the unfamiliar controls with a newfound confidence. The knowledge from the alien database flowed through his mind, guiding his every action as he rewired circuits and reprogrammed systems. Sweat poured down his face, mixing with the grime and dirt of his long ordeal, but he barely noticed, so focused was he on his task. Days turned into weeks as Jordan labored, his makeshift shelter in the ruins becoming a second home. He scavenged parts from the surrounding wreckage, cannibalizing ancient technology to breathe new life into the spacecraft. Slowly, piece by piece, the ship began to take shape, its sleek lines and advanced systems a testament to the ingenuity of its long-dead creators. At last the final component slotted into place, and the spacecraft hummed with power, its engines thrumming with barely contained energy. Jordan stepped back, a triumphant grin spreading across his face. He was ready, ready to return to the stars, to find his way back to his people and share the incredible knowledge he had uncovered. But as he turned to gather his few remaining supplies, a sound from outside the ruins froze him in his tracks, the unmistakable whine of Edosian shuttle engines growing louder by the second. Heart pounding, Jordan raced to the spacecraft's cockpit, his fingers flying over the controls as he brought the ship's systems online. The ruins shook as the Edosian shuttles touched down, disgorging dozens of heavily armed soldiers. At their head strode a figure Jordan had hoped never to see again. Admiral Drazak, his face twisted with rage and determination. You thought you could hide from me, human, Drazak snarled, his voice amplified by his suit's external speakers. You thought you could keep the secrets of this place to yourself? Foolish creature, I will have what I came for, and I will see you dead at my feet. Jordan's response was to power up the spacecraft's weapons, ancient cannons thrumming with energy, as they emerged from hidden recesses in the ship's hull. He had no intention of going down without a fight. Drazak's soldiers opened fire, plasma bolts scorching the air as they rained down on the spacecraft. Jordan returned fire, the ship's advanced targeting systems making short work of the Edosian troops. Explosions rocked the ruins as the two forces clashed, ancient stone crumbling under the onslaught of advanced weaponry. But Drazak's forces were relentless, pouring into the ruins like a deadly tide. Jordan knew he couldn't hold them off forever. With a final, desperate effort, he activated the spacecraft's experimental hyperdrive, praying to whatever gods might be listening that the untested system would work. The ship shuddered as the drive engaged, space warping and twisting around it. Jordan felt himself being pushed back into his seat, the G-forces immense as the craft accelerated to impossible speeds. Consoles sparked and alarms blared, the ship shaking itself apart as it hurtled through the fabric of reality. And then, with a sickening lurch, everything went wrong. The hyperdrive, unstable and untested, tore a gaping wound in the fabric of space-time. The spacecraft, Drazak's shuttles, the very ruins themselves, all were sucked into the swirling vortex of the wormhole, vanishing from the planet's surface in a blinding flash of light. When Jordan regained consciousness, he found himself in the midst of utter chaos. The wormhole had deposited him in the heart of a raging space battle, Terran and Edosian ships locked in a deadly dance of destruction. Plasma bolts and missile contrails crisscrossed the void, ships exploding into brief silent fireballs as they were torn apart by the ceaseless barrage. Jordan's heart sank as he saw the toll the battle was taking on both sides. Terran frigates, their hulls breached and venting atmosphere, drifted lifelessly alongside the shattered remnants of Edosian cruisers. Fighters, human and Edosian alike, tumbled through the void, their pilots forever lost to the cold embrace of space. In that moment, Jordan knew what he had to do. 
the knowledge he carried, the secrets of the ancient civilization, could end this conflict once and for all. He had to reach the Terran command ship, had to share what he had learned, before it was too late. Gripping the controls with determination, Jordan plunged the spacecraft into the heart of the battle, weaving and dodging through the chaos with a skill born of desperation. Plasma bolts streaked past the cockpit, barely missing the ship's gleaming hull as he pushed the craft to its limits. In his rearview display, Jordan caught a glimpse of Drazak's shuttles, the Admiral's face contorted with rage as he pursued his quarry through the maelstrom of destruction. Jordan knew the Adosian would stop at nothing to prevent him from reaching his goal, to keep the secrets of the ancient civilization for himself. But Jordan was determined. He would not let Drazak win, would not let the sacrifice of so many on both sides of this terrible war be in vain. With a final burst of speed, he angled the spacecraft towards the distant shape of the Terran command ship, its massive hull a beacon of hope amidst the carnage. The fate of two civilizations hung in the balance as Jordan raced towards his destiny. The knowledge that could change everything clutched tightly in his mind. He only prayed that he would be in time, that the secrets of the ancient civilization could bring an end to the cycle of hatred and violence that had consumed both Edotians and humans for so long. The spacecraft shuddered as a plasma bolt grazed its hull, alarms blaring in the cockpit. Jordan gritted his teeth, his hands flying over the controls as he struggled to keep the ship on course. Behind him, Drazak's shuttles closed in, their weapons hammering at the spacecraft's weakening shields. Jordan's mind raced as he searched for a solution, a way to outmaneuver his relentless pursuer. The knowledge from the alien database swirled through his thoughts, fragments of technology and tactics coalescing into a daring plan. With a flick of a switch, Jordan diverted power from the ship's weapons to its shields, the protective energy fields flaring to life with renewed strength. Then, in a move that defied belief, he cut the spacecraft's engines, sending the ship into a seemingly uncontrolled tumble. Dryzak, seeing his prey suddenly helpless, moved in for the kill, his shuttles closing in like predators scenting blood. But Jordan was far from helpless. As the Adotian ships drew near, he triggered the spacecraft's emergency thrusters, sending it spinning in a dizzying corkscrew maneuver. Caught off guard, Drazak's shuttles flew past, their shots going wide as they struggled to compensate for the sudden change in trajectory. Jordan seized the moment, reigniting the spacecraft's main engines and rocketing away, leaving his pursuers far behind. But the respite was short-lived. As Jordan approached the Terran command ship, the battle around him intensified, the Adotian forces redoubling their efforts to break through the human fleet's defenses. Fighters swarmed like angry hornets, their plasma cannons stitching deadly patterns through the void. A squadron of Edosian interceptors broke off from the main battle, angling towards Jordan's spacecraft with murderous intent. Jordan jinked and weaved, his ship responding like an extension of his own body, as he dodged and rolled through the hail of enemy fire. One by one the Edosian fighters fell away, succumbing to the spacecraft's superior speed and maneuverability. But the last interceptor, its pilot a veteran of countless battles, clung to Jordan's tail with grim determination. Plasma bolts hammered at the spacecraft's shields, alarms shrieking as the protective energy fields began to fail. Jordan knew he had only moments before the Edosian fighter's next salvo breached his ship's hull, ending his desperate mission in a fiery instant. In a flash of inspiration, Jordan remembered a tactic from the alien database, a risky maneuver used by the ancient civilization's pilots in their own desperate battles. With a whispered prayer, he threw the spacecraft into a gut-wrenching loop, the G-forces pressing him back into his seat with crushing force. The Adotian fighter, caught off guard by the sudden maneuver, shot past, its pilot struggling to bring the ship back onto Jordan's tail. But Jordan was ready his finger hovering over the trigger of his ship's rear-facing cannons. A single precise burst of plasma fire, and the Adotian interceptor vanished in a blossom of flame and debris, its pilot's life snuffed out in an instant. Jordan, his heart pounding with a mixture of exhilaration and sorrow, turned his attention back to his goal, 
the Terran command ship looming ahead. As he closed in on the massive vessel, Jordan activated his ship's communications array, broadcasting on every frequency he could remember from his days in the Terran fleet. This is Lieutenant Jordan Walker of the Terran Alliance, he announced, his voice hoarse with emotion. I have vital information that could change the course of this war, requesting permission to dock immediately. For a long, heart-stopping moment, there was only silence, the static of the empty channel mocking Jordan's desperate plea. Then, like a miracle, a voice crackled through the speakers, the clipped tones of a Terran communications officer filling the cockpit. Lieutenant Walker, this is Terran Command. We thought you were dead, sir. Permission to dock granted. Welcome home. Jordan felt a wave of relief wash over him, tears stinging his eyes as he guided the spacecraft towards the command ship's waiting hangar bay. He had made it, against all odds, and now the knowledge he carried could finally be put to use, could finally bring an end to this terrible conflict. But even as the spacecraft settled onto the hangar deck with a gentle thump, Jordan knew that his mission was far from over. Drazak was still out there, still determined to claim the secrets of the ancient civilization for his own twisted ends. As he stepped out of the spacecraft, Jordan squared his shoulders, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. The fate of two civilizations rested on his shoulders, and he would not rest until he had seen his mission through to the end. The hangar bay was a hive of activity, crews rushing to refuel and rearm fighters, medics tending to the wounded, and officers barking orders over the din. Jordan, still in his battered flight suit, strode through the chaos with single-minded purpose, his eyes fixed on the lift that would take him to the command deck. As he waited for the lift, a hand clamped down on his shoulder, spinning him around. Jordan found himself face to face with a grizzled Terran commander, his uniform bristling with medals and commendations. Lieutenant Walker, the commander said, his voice a low growl. You have some explaining to do. Where the hell have you been and what's this about vital information? Jordan met the commander's gaze, his own eyes burning with intensity. Sir, I've discovered something that could change everything. The technology, the knowledge of an ancient civilization that predates both our own and the Edosians. It could hold the key to ending this war, to bringing lasting peace to our people. The commander's eyes narrowed, skepticism etched across his battle-scarred features. And you expect me to just take your word for it, Lieutenant? After you've been missing in action for God knows how long? Jordan shook his head, reaching into his flight suit and pulling out a small crystalline data drive. No, sir, I have proof. This contains a fraction of the data I've uncovered, enough to give you a glimpse of what we're dealing with here. I need to speak with Admiral Vance immediately. The fate of our entire civilization could depend on it. It's not, Jordan said, his voice firm with conviction. I stake my life on it, sir. The lift doors hissed open, and Jordan stepped inside, the commander at his side. As the lift began to rise, carrying them towards the command deck, Jordan felt a sense of purpose settle over him, a calm certainty that he was exactly where he needed to be. He knew that the road ahead would be long and difficult, that there would be obstacles and challenges at every turn. But he also knew that he had the power to make a difference, to shape the future of both Edosians and humans alike. And with that knowledge came a sense of hope, a flicker of light in the darkness of war and hatred. Jordan closed his eyes, the data drive clutched tightly in his hand, and prepared himself for whatever lay ahead. As plasma bolts streaked past his cockpit, Jordan gritted his teeth, his hands flying over the ancient spacecraft's controls. The battle raged all around him, the void lit by the flash of explosions and the deadly dance of Terran and Edosian ships locked in mortal combat. A searing blast rocked Jordan's ship, alarms shrieking as the shields flickered and died. Smoke poured from overloaded consoles, the acrid stench filling the cockpit. Jordan coughed, his eyes watering as he struggled to keep the battered craft on course. Suddenly a massive Edosian warship loomed out of the chaos, its weapons already glowing with deadly intent. Jordan's heart seized in his chest, knowing that he had no chance against the behemoth's firepower. But before the Edosian ship could open fire, a barrage of plasma bolts slammed into its shield, sending it reeling. 
Jordan's eyes widened as a second Edosian vessel swept into view, its guns blazing as it placed itself between him and certain destruction. Jordan, this is Solaris, a familiar voice crackled over the calm. We've got you covered. Get to the Terran command ship now. Jordan felt a surge of hope as he recognized the voice of his unlikely ally. Solaris and Kaz had come through, risking everything to give him a chance to end this war once and for all. With renewed determination, Jordan punched the throttle. The ancient spacecraft surging forward as Solaris and Kaz's ship ran interference, drawing the fire of the Edosian fleet. Plasma bolts streaked past on all sides, the commandeered warship's shields flaring as it absorbed the onslaught. Jordan's heart pounded as the Terran command vessel loomed ahead, its hangar bay doors already sliding open to receive him. With a final burst of speed, he guided the spacecraft through the shimmering force field, the ancient ship skidding to a halt on the deck plating. Before the engines had even finished spooling down, Jordan was out of his seat, snatching up the crystalline data drive and sprinting down the ramp. Armed marines met him at the bottom, their weapons trained on the unfamiliar craft. Stand down, Jordan shouted, holding up the data drive. I'm Lieutenant Jordan Walker, Terran Alliance. I have vital information that could end this war, but we don't have much time. The marines hesitated, their eyes flicking to the insignia on Jordan's battered flight suit. Then, with a curt nod, they lowered their weapons, escorting him at a run through the ship's corridors. Jordan burst onto the bridge, the data drive clutched tightly in his hand. Admiral Vance turned to face him, her eyes widening in recognition. Lieutenant Walker, what is the meaning of this? Admiral, I've discovered something that changes everything, Jordan said, his voice urgent. The war between our people and the Edosians, it's all been a terrible mistake. A tragic cycle of violence and misunderstanding that's been going on for generations. As Jordan slotted the data drive into the bridge's main console, the holographic display sprang to life, ancient records and histories playing out before the stunned eyes of the bridge crew. The true story of the long-dead civilization and the origins of the Edosian human conflict unfolded. A tale of a once great society, torn apart by the same hatred and mistrust that now consumed their own peoples. On the view screen, Solaris and Kaz's faces appeared, the two unlikely allies standing united on the bridge of their commandeered ship. People of the Terran Alliance of the Edosian Empire, Solaris began, his voice ringing with conviction. For too long we have been locked in a cycle of violence and destruction, fueled by hatred and fear of the unknown. But now we have a chance to break that cycle, Kaz continued his eyes blazing with fierce determination, to forge a new path, one of understanding and cooperation. The evidence you now see before you is undeniable. Our war has been nothing but a tragic waste, a mistake that has cost us all dearly. As the weight of their words sank in, Admiral Vance turned to her Edosian counterpart, the battle-scarred commander's face etched with a mix of shock and dawning realization. Admiral Zoran. Vance said, her voice steady despite the emotion that threatened to overwhelm her. In light of this revelation, I propose an immediate ceasefire. It's time we put an end to this senseless conflict and begin the hard work of building a lasting peace between our peoples. For a long tense moment, Admiral Zoran hesitated, the weight of centuries of war and mistrust hanging heavy in the air. Then slowly, he reached out his hand clasping Vance's in a firm grip. Agreed, he said, his voice rough with emotion. Let this be the first step towards a brighter future for us all. Cheers erupted on both bridges as the orders went out. Terran and Edosian ships alike, standing down their weapons and pulling back from the brink of annihilation. Jordan felt a rush of relief and joy, knowing that his desperate gamble had paid off, that the sacrifices of so many had not been in vain. But the moment was shattered by a sudden brutal barrage of weapons fire. The Terran command ship rocked under the onslaught, consoles exploding in showers of sparks and flame. Report, Admiral Vance barked, gripping the arms of her command chair as the deck shuddered beneath her feet. It's the dauntless Admiral, 
a sensor officer cried out, his voice tight with fear. Admiral Drazak's flagship, he's opened fire on us. As the dauntless weapons powered up for another devastating salvo, Jordan and Kaz locked eyes across the vast gulf of space, a moment of perfect understanding passing between them. Moving as one, they raced to their respective consoles, fingers flying over the controls as they brought the ancient technology to bear. The knowledge of the lost civilization flowed through them, guiding their actions as they worked to disable Drazak's ship and end his mad reign of terror. On the viewscreen, the Dauntless shuddered and lurched, its weapons powering down as Jordan and Kaz's efforts bore fruit. Drazak's face contorted with disbelief and fury, his shouts of rage echoing over the comm as his ship was locked down by the ancient technology, rendered helpless and adrift. This is Terran command to all ships, Admiral Vance's voice rang out, filled with a fierce, unwavering determination. Admiral Drazak is to be placed under immediate arrest for crimes against sentience. The ceasefire holds. We will not let the actions of one madman derail our chance for peace. As Terran and Edosian boarding parties swarmed the Dauntless, taking Drazak and his loyalists into custody, Jordan sagged back in his seat, exhaustion and relief washing over him in equal measure. As the dust of the battle settled, the Terran and Edosian fleets began the arduous process of repairing the damage and establishing a framework for lasting peace. In the midst of the wreckage and ruin, Jordan, Solaris, and Kaz emerged as the unlikely heroes of both sides, their actions and sacrifices serving as a beacon of hope in a galaxy torn apart by hatred and war. On the Terran command ship, Jordan stood before a sea of faces, human and Edosian alike, as Admiral Vance pinned a gleaming medal to his chest. Your bravery and dedication have shown us the path to peace, she said, her voice ringing with pride and gratitude. You have proven that even in our darkest hour, the light of understanding can prevail. Solaris and Kaz too were honoured by their respective peoples, their names spoken with reverence and awe. But even as they basked in the glow of their newfound status, a shadow fell across their hearts. In the days that followed, as the ancient technology Jordan had discovered was studied and analysed, a chilling truth came to light. The advanced civilization that had created these wonders had also developed a weapon of unimaginable power, a device capable of annihilating entire star systems in the blink of an eye. Jordan, Solaris and Kaz gathered in a secure chamber, their faces grim as they pored over the schematics and simulations. If this technology were to fall into the wrong hands, Solaris said, his voice heavy with dread, it could mean the end of everything we've fought for. Jordan, his heart heavy with the weight of the decision before them, knew that they had no choice. We'll have to destroy the ruins, he said, his voice barely above a whisper. All of it. Every last trace of the technology, the knowledge, everything. And so with heavy hearts, the trio set out to do the unthinkable. They returned to the ancient ruins, armed with the most powerful explosives and demolition equipment they could muster. As they worked, placing charges and setting timers, they could feel the weight of history bearing down upon them, the ghosts of the past whispering in their ears. Finally, as the last charge was set, they retreated to a safe distance, their hands trembling as they held the detonator. Jordan looked to Solaris and Kaz, seeing the same mix of determination and sorrow etched across their faces. We're doing the right thing, he said, his voice barely audible over the whipping wind. For the sake of the future, for the sake of peace. As one, they pressed the button, and the world erupted in a blinding flash of light and fire. The ancient ruins crumbled and burned, the secrets of the long-dead civilization consumed by the flames. Jordan, Solaris, and Kaz watched in silence, the weight of their actions settling upon their shoulders like a shroud. In the years that followed, the fragile peace between the Terrans and Edosians held, but the scars of the war ran deep. Jordan, haunted by the lives he had taken, and the sacrifices he had made, struggled to find his place in a world that no longer made sense. The once unshakable belief in the righteousness of his cause had been shattered, leaving him adrift in a sea of doubt and regret. Solaris and Kaz too found themselves struggling to navigate the complexities of the post-war galaxy, 
Though hailed as visionaries and peacemakers by some, they were met with suspicion and hostility by those who still clung to the old hatreds, their every move scrutinized and questioned. As tensions simmered, and new conflicts threatened to erupt, the three friends found themselves drawn together once more, bound by the shared burden of their experiences. They met in secret, in quiet corners and shadowed halls, to share their fears and their hopes, to offer comfort and support in a galaxy that seemed determined to tear itself apart. Jordan sat in his quarters, staring out at the stars, his mind awash with memories of the battles he had fought and the lives he had changed. He thought of Solaris and Kaz, of the bond they had forged in the crucible of war, and he wondered if the sacrifices they had made had been worth it in the end. The peace they had fought so hard to achieve seemed fragile and fleeting, a gossamer thread stretched across the vast expanse of space. How long, he wondered, before it snapped under the weight of old grudges and new ambitions? How long before the cycle of violence and retribution began anew? You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.